Basically everything over 30 is supposed to be mature, right? Like, where does that come from? I don't know. I'm 33 and apparently I'm mature now, but like, I'm only getting started in this life. Remember how I told you it came all shattered? I super glued it. <laughs> that would be a really cute way of using it too. I just kept reaching for it and I really liked it. And you know what? I think I put a dent in it. Powdery, but not an old school powdery. The modern interpretation of powdery, which to me is I hope I'm in focus now. Am I in focus? Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Charlotte. If you're new here, I do videos on beauty and fragrance. And if you're a returning subscriber, welcome back. Thank you so much for being here with me today. Today I want to share with you all the perfumes that I wore in January. This is what I wore, honestly. Obviously, I have lots of perfumes and I'm constantly testing new ones, so I wore other perfumes, but these are the ones that I kept reaching for over and over again and I'm also gonna let you know what I wore them for in what context like for what situation I went to them if you know what I mean so yeah if that sounds good to you let's get into it okay so my first category was the scents that I picked up when I just wanted to really be overpowered sort of by a fragrance I wanted to be completely like caught in a scent bubble and usually it's when I was going outside in really cold temperatures so I live in Eastern Canada, so you know, it gets, it gets, it gets to minus 20 Celsius pretty, pretty often. Um, and so the fragrances that I really, really kept reaching for, for really cold weather were Angel Muse, the Eau de Toilette, and ah, oh, this is a perfume that I think I mentioned already on my yeah, I'm pretty sure I already mentioned on my channel that I had a little bit of trouble with or that I wasn't sure about. I love it, you guys know. I love it. I absolutely love it and it really does come alive in the cold. It's amazing. Oh, it has that chocolatey undertone, which honestly, I don't know that I would have identified it as chocolate. It's a patchouli more that's kind of giving a vibe of chocolate, I guess, but. I really like the passion fruit at the top. Is it passion fruit? I think it's passion fruit. It seems like a combination that wouldn't necessarily go well together, but it just works. It works. It really works in this. It's so good. It's so intoxicating. And my other choice for this was Mancera's Instant Crush. Similar to that one, extremely potent, enveloping. Uh, you will leave a trail. Everyone will smell you. And this, when you first smell it out of the atomizer, I have to be honest, when I first bought this, I was a little bit scared of it. I was just not expecting it to be so overpowering and have a very strong saffron note at the top. But when you spray this and it mixes with your clothes and your skin, it's just this beautiful, rich, velvety, warm amber and it's really addictive and it still has that spiciness from the saffron. I, I think it's well done. I really like it. It's not for the faint of heart. Both of these, I think, are not for new noses. Uh, a new nose is, to me, is someone who can be like, oh, I like that or I don't like that, but they don't necessarily know what they're smelling and they can't necessarily tell perfumes apart. So, for example, someone who would think that like Flower Bomb and La Vie Belle smell the same, like totally different perfumes to someone who's smelled a lot of perfumes, but to a new nose, they might smell the same. I think to a new nose, these would be off-putting. I think they, it's too much. It would be too much. Um, I, yeah, I, I don't think that these are safe blind buys for anyone who's new in perfume. If you have experience with perfume and you don't have these already and you haven't tried them and you like that sort of really rich, over the top enveloping cold weather scent. These are really, really good. I really enjoyed them this month. Okay, the other scents that I had, and it's funny because I kept putting them on when I was gonna go train or work out. When I was reaching for them, what I was looking for was to be uplifted. So these are still winter heavy hitters, absolutely. 
but there's something bright and uplifting about them and that's why I picked these up a lot and that is Pure Excess by Paco Rabanne, that salty popcorn vanilla, uh, it's just, it just feels really playful. Playful and sexy and yeah, yeah, like just when I want to feel like fun, this is what I picked up. And when I really wanted to be like uplifted and uplift my mood really, uh, Girl of Now Shine is just amazing. It's that same beautiful Ellie Sab Girl of Now that we love, but that, that pineapple just really, really fleshes out the original Girl of Now, I find. It really feels like it's rounding it out, like it completes the scent. And I'm not saying it's better, I don't think, than the regular Girl of Now, but I will say I can't tell which one I prefer. It's that good, it's so good. I can't tell which one I prefer. Um, and they're not actually that different, but this one has that brightness, that juiciness from the pineapple. I think I've said it before that like, the pineapple is like the rich fruit, right? So I reached for this a lot in January. And then next up, I have three scents that I kept reaching for either when I was going to bed, getting out of the shower, or waking up and getting ready for the day and having my coffee in the morning. So the after shower scent was very surprising to me and I kept reaching for it and it's not a sh after shower scent, I don't think. But this is, by Narciso Rodriguez. This is Narciso Rouge. This is the one that usually comes in the red cube, but this was a limited edition, what they call generous spray bottle because it has a very huge spray, generous spray. And this is a very powdery, but not an old school powdery the modern interpretation of powdery, which to me is like that creamy iris powdery with the tonka bean. Really beautiful. At first I thought it was too powdery, but I keep reaching for it when I get out of the shower. So it seems to be something I really like to wear out of the shower when I'm just like in my bathrobe and I want to read a book or get ready for bed or yeah, but not necessarily a bedtime scent, okay? It's my out of shower scent, this one. Next up, again, I'm so surprised because I didn't think that this was a love at first sniff. I thought it was just okay, but I just kept reaching for it and I really liked it. And you know what? I think I put a dent in it. And that is Dolce and, Ga Dolce and Gabbana, the only one, the original. And this is a coffee fragrance, but I definitely get more of the coffee in this than in some other coffee scents like Black Opium. I don't know, maybe that's why I kept reaching for it in the morning, it's almost like I craved it. But really beautiful coffee scent. See this for a new nose, I think could please you. It's not complicated. It's pleasing, it's yummy. There's something a little bit fuzzy in it, which let me know down in the comments below if you have another word for that. What I mean by fuzzy is, I don't know, it's like this weird sharpness that actually because of that I wasn't Sure that I would reach for it, but apparently I don't mind it. And look, do I have a dent? Oh my god, you guys, I think I have a dent. Okay, that's what I was gonna say. You know what the fuzziness is, I think? I think it's the violets. And I've said it before, I don't think I'm a huge violet fan. In this, it's okay though, it's subtle violets. It's not strong violets, it's subtle. But I do smell the violets. Um, violet, coffee, and caramel. It does have other stuff in it too, of course, but that's mainly what I get. Really beautiful, really nice. I also think that the bottle is very classic. You know, like you can't go wrong with this. It's it's glam, it's beautiful, it's solid. It looks great. It's not delicate, you know, you're not gonna break it by accident. <laughs> solid cap, you could lift up like this without it falling off, if you know what I mean. And lastly, but certainly not least, we have R.E.M. by Ariana Grande. And this I wore at bedtime. I wore this a few times at bedtime. It was really nice. Remember how I told you it came all shattered? I super glued it. <laughs> I super glued it back together. I think it's so cool. I love it. In the comments down below, a subscriber said that she used these as like a holder for all her little decants, which I think is so cool too. Like that's so cute. That would be a really cute way of using it too. 
Anyway, I'm supposed to talk about the perfume, right? This is that salted caramel lavender. It's really, really, really nice, you guys. There's something very, very comforting about it in a slightly more mature way. And by mature, I only mean not juvenile. Basically everything over 30 is supposed to be mature, right? Like, where does that come from? I don't know. I'm 33 and apparently I'm mature now, but like, I'm only getting started in this life, right? So there you have it. Those are my most worn scents of January and what I consider to be really good winter heavy hitters. Let me know down in the comments below if any of these or fragrances you wore a lot too this winter. I'd love to know. And if there's any other one that you think I would like to, if I didn't show it to you here. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope that you enjoyed. If you enjoyed the video, you might want to go and check out my Instagram too. Uh, I've started becoming more active on my account there and I'm sharing content that I don't share on YouTube. So if you're interested in knowing my first impressions on any of the scents I receive in the mail, uh, any kind of hauls I do or unboxings or anything like that, go check it out. Yeah, thank you so much for watching. I really hope that you enjoyed. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and ring the notification bell so you don't miss a video. And until next time, please take care of yourself. I will see you very soon.